All right, we are back. This it is still February 17th, and we are back. This is Senate Government Operations. And we took a short break, and now we're looking at S-155. And we have with us John Federico uh, from DMV. And John, my apologies um, for <coughs> the kind of the push and pull that we've had going on here, which is um, because of scheduling and then non-scheduling and then changing and stuff. So we're, we're very glad that you finally made it to, to, to us. So thank you for coming. So if you'd like to um, just jump right into your testimony, that would be great. And you are muted. Okay, how's there that? Go. There you go, perfect. Okay. Um, First of all, no apology necessary. Thank you. Um, appreciate being invited back to speak to you. Uh, for the record, John Federico, Inspector, Department of Motor Vehicles, Division of Enforcement and Safety. Um, apologize for the uh, technical stuff. Um, not in my usual environment today. So I know we miss just, your your background ah, of your. I was going to say we we hardly know who you are without that background. Well, well, they asked me specifically to make sure that we weren't uh, we weren't advertising today while we were on the record <laughs> opposing okay. the reorganization. So I, I said, sure, that makes sense. Okay. Um, but uh, um, um, but uh, I'm glad you like the background. Um, so again, thanks. I appreciate the the uh, the invite back. Um, and really, I'm just going to try and probably just reiterate some of the things that I, I talked about last time, but certainly, of course, if anything is new for you, please, please ask. Um, I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have. Um, and so I'll say, um, Madam Chair, I wish, I wish it was different. I wish we were uh, on the same side because um, uh, I know this is uh, coming from, um, um, from a good place. Uh, and, uh, and, and I, I know that the, uh, that this is important. Um, we, we still um, believe that the reorganization isn't good for the DMV, for Vermonters, for our mission and for our employment. Um, we believe that the state is still better off with groups of the separate, the separate law enforcement groups rather than a large public safety office. All of the units outside the Department of Public Safety are highly specialized and deeply entrenched in their own agencies and departments. And when I say entrenched, of course, I'm you know, talking about everything from um, the relationship with the customers, with, uh, with the other su support staff, HR, payroll, uh, finance, um, the other um, civilian staff within their own agencies and, and, uh, and everything that goes with it. Um, we still believe that the efficiencies that we uh, heard discussed um, that are reasons for uh, talking about reorganizing can occur without uh, the complication and the known and the unknown costs of creating a Department of Law Enforcement. We believe that training and policy, public and internal oversight of law enforcement can be standardized if that is the goal without, without having to reorganize all the specialized law enforcement officers under one umbrella. Currently, um, one, one, one consideration uh, we'd like you just to take note of uh, for what would happen if we combine under an agency um, is that currently law enforcement officers in the state, let's say they decide that their current employment is no longer for them or it, it, it wasn't something that they wanted to do or continue to do. Um, they, can, they can go and apply um, to another state law enforcement department. Um, and the key is that we all currently act sort of like separate independent police departments, even though we all work for the state. So in that, we currently select and screen candidates, just like any other police department would. We follow the current um, laws associated with background investigations and that sort of thing. Um, a large agency um, would simply be able to transfer people from division to division without the same uh, types of vetting and without the same choice. Um, just imagine a scenario where, say, one division was just too short of staff, uh, but somebody wanted to transfer um, to another division. Um, the department or the agency may not allow that because of staffing. Um, 
It also happens plenty uh, often that um, sometimes an agency who's vetting um, candidates that are coming from within the state may decide that that isn't the best fit for their department or that's not the best candidate for their department and they're not selected. This may no longer be the case if we're talking about transfers within a larger uh, agency under one umbrella. One other area of concern is that we believe that more executive positions, commissioners, deputy commissioners, um, uh, the addition of which don't seem to currently be necessary for current law enforcement operations, um, but would, would be added to, to the agency under, under uh, the proposed uh, organization, um, would cost Vermonters hundreds of thousands of dollars more a year. Um, as, as, as the chair knows, employees just spent uh, a, a long summer helping to figure out how we would give back in order to save uh, our post-employment benefits. Um, in fact, the state is providing very generously in that proposed plan in order to save those benefits as well. And it just seems at odds to our group, to the VSEA, um, that we would create additional expenses such as these um, if, we, if they weren't absolutely necessary. Um, one thing I wanna throw out to the group as I was considering um, this going back and listening to all of the uh, this summer retirement group uh, discussions um, was that we, we found out that Group C is highly subsidized by the state. Um, they did some, um, I think, actuarial research and found that, um, that while we were highly subsidized, a group of a retirement group, we weren't subsidized at the expense of other retirement groups. And it, it, this type of thing was not unusual for retirement systems in general. We also found out that the Department of Public Safety is the largest number of Group C members in it, and that their budget is largely driven, driven by the general fund. I mean, our budget is mixed with federal funds, and I'm, I'm not an expert in, in the organization and government, and I don't know the answer to this, but I just wondered if has, have other people considered this if we drive all of the law enforcement officers in Group C to the agency of public safety, which is largely driven by the general fund, is that going to create any more undue burden uh, on, on the retirement plan? Um, there, there is a line in the bill that protects current employees uh, to a certain degree when it comes to involuntary transfers. Um, but the bill itself contains a lot of language that allows the new executive staff to reorganize the, the agency or the, 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 the department and the divisions under it, how's they, how they see fit. Um, our members are concerned over a lot of the language in the bill that allows for transfer of classified positions, transfer of appropriations, the ability to organize, reorganize, transfer or abolish divisions, staff functions, change ranks or change grades of employees, assign or transfer members within a division to serve at such stations and to perform such duties as the commissioner shall designate. And that's just some of the examples of the language that's really concerning to members. They don't know what it means. They don't know how it's, how it's gonna turn out for them. Um, don't get me wrong. We all know that the, the, the boss runs the show. Um, we as employees, um, all we can do sometimes is attempt to negotiate items that we m might believe are negotiable and grieve things that we believe shouldn't be altered or removed, um, but we believe that the language in the bill is potentially setting us up for a lot of problems in the future. Um, I, and I'd also like to you know, remind the committee that they did hear some testimony from people like uh, the, Buck, the Trust and Tr Truck and Bus Association um, about the longstanding relationships that DMV has made with, um, with its customers and the uh, professional department that, uh, that we've created there. And, uh, you know, again, we're concerned that the focus um, will come off of um, the safety of commercial motor vehicles and, uh, and we don't wanna see that happen. Um, not much else has changed for us um, uh, from the executive order to the bill, um, and, uh, except for some of that language that I talked about um, specifically, and, um, and I'd be uh, happy to entertain any, any questions that you might have. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, does anybody have any questions for John um, right now? Yes, uh, yes Senator Polina. 
By the way, John, it's um, Senator Polina's birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday. So be gentle with me. <laughs> I'm feeling old. No, I'm asking you the same thing. <laughs> Well, I don't want to be redundant, but it seems I would just want to. It seems like what you're saying is you're just concerned about your loss of autonomy, and I'm wondering, do you see this this merger or whatever this new agency as something that might undermine your ability to get your job done efficiently? Well, I think the 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 undermining. I wouldn't call it undermining, but I, I think what it is is the bill doesn't contemplate all the all the the facets, all the details that that I don't think people have contemplated when, when uh, you talk about just picking one group over and moving it over here and assuming that it'll work. I think that we are so entrenched in, in the department that we're in uh, organizationally um, by all the statutes that have been layered upon layered, you know, over the years um, and in the relationships, like I said, inside and out that, that, you know, I guess we'll go back and forth and argue um, about whether it will change or it won't change. Uh, the, I've heard you know, many times the intent is not to have it change, but I don't see how moving people over and then figuring out how that might work um, is the best plan, is the best way of going about doing it, if they were going to do it at all. I'm also just wondering, I don't know if you know the answer to this question or not, but clearly you're speaking on behalf of your department or division what are there, are there other groups of divisions or departments where workers are feeling the same way? I mean, we're hearing what you're saying. I'm just wondering whether, and maybe it's not appropriate. Maybe you don't know, haven't had contact. I'm just wondering whether you think you, what you're saying would be substantiated by others in the other departments. No, uh, no that's absolutely fair, um, Senator. And um, we did not refresh a survey that the VSEA did of all the VSEA covered law enforcement officers the first time that this came up. I believe last year. Um, and uh, although that survey did show overwhelmingly that the law enforcement officers surveyed uh, or VSCA members uh, did not support um, an agency of public safety or something didn't support the agency of public safety, they didn't support all law enforcement officers being brought under an agency of public safety. I think it should be much more specific about it. Um, it's, <laughs> I, I'm not talking about the agency of public safety bill as a whole, talking about the consolidation of law enforcement groups under it. Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Senator Clarkson. Thanks, John. I just need to have a reminder of how many uh, people this is affecting. I, I, it's been a while and I, I just am not remembering. Sure. Uh, I believe uh, the last time when we did the survey, we did it with about 120 people. So that's law enforcement officers assigned to the Department of Motor Vehicles, right. Liquor and Lottery, Fish and Game. Right. Um, the state's, the, the Secretary of State's office, um, the Attorney General's office, the Medical Board under Human Services, I believe. Um, How many with you at DMV? There's 27 of us. Yeah, that's what I remember. It was in the 20s. Thanks. So you're the largest, mm -hmm. I think, of that group, aren't you? Uh, Probably close to it. I mean, fishing yeah. game. Fishing game might is have, pretty hot. Yeah, they might be equal or maybe even a little bit bigger. Yeah. Thanks, sure. Senator Colomar. Thank you, Madam Chair. John, welcome back. Um, it sounds like, and if I'm not characterizing your remarks appropriately, please let me know. But it sounds like at least DMV, and I, to be fair, I have not heard from fishing game. I haven't heard from lottery and liquor. I haven't heard from anybody except the envy, but I have heard very loudly from um, your group. But it sounds like you would rather not be part of this, but I'm at a loss to find out how else we could do it. Do you have any sort of idea how we could, uh, I don't want to say exclude, but you know what I'm trying to say? I, I, I'm sympathetic with what you're concerns are, but I, I, I just don't understand organizationally how we can't include DMV in this. Well, I mean, part of what we're wondering is, you know, I'm not clear, we're not clear really on uh, if we're going to do this, why are we not, are we not doing everybody at the same time? 
because this bill doesn't seem to contemplate anybody but moving DMV over for now. And I don't know if we are at the place where we're studying the other groups before we move them in, which gives us the opportunity not to move them in if it if it's perceived that it wasn't it wouldn't, you know, it's no longer believed to be the best organizationally in order to move anybody else in. But if that's the case, I think our members are definitely going to feel like, well, if it, if it didn't work, if it, if it isn't best to move everybody in and we're in, there's no way we're then coming out. You know what I mean? We're never, we're never going to reverse this decision once it's made. Um, but that may just leave the DMV in the division or department of law enforcement and it may keep everybody else you know, where they are, where they are, if, if, if it's decided down the road that uh, it's not prudent to, to move other, uh, other divisions like liquor and fishing game, et cetera, et cetera, in, uh, in under the same umbrella. So, uh, so I don't think I answered your question directly, but I, I don't know how the, I, I assume the agency of public safety can bill can stand on its own without the division of department of motor vehicle without the division of motor vehicles uh under the department of law enforcement i guess you don't need a department if it's just a division of state police but um i assume that the rest of the agency of public safety bill and organization can stand on its own without us um by the looks of it I, and and perhaps i'm wrong but um but i would suggest that it could um if that were the case or i would suggest that if it's prudent to move everybody in um you know we're, we're, what are we doing about the other groups? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator Plain, I think you had a question. Yeah, actually, I, I, you partly answered it. I was gonna ask whether or not you've been able to have direct talks with uh, department heads and whatnot, so-called leadership about alternatives to what, you what, what they're planning on doing. But I didn't realize that um, you're saying that DMV is the only group that's going to immediately move into this new agency. I, that, I didn't realize that. So the other, the fish and game folks and others would not necessarily be moved in at the same time frame as what you you folks would be the, the sort of the, the guinea pigs to see how it all works out. Well, I, Senator, I think that's how the executive order contemplated it. And I don't know that this bill language changed that. Uh, you, you might have to ask, uh, I, I might be, I might have to stand corrected and, and if we ask the, the you know, um, maybe the chair, if she knows you better, are, but. Uh, you are right, John. It, what it does is it contemplates um, by October of 23, um, looking at moving in fish and wildlife, liquor and lottery, Capitol Police, Department of Labor, Project Work Safe, Passenger Tramway Safety. But there's, a, so if I'm time. correct, there's still sort of an and a, a sort of an eject lever clause in there that, that you know. Well, it says shall study the effectiveness, efficiency, and delivery. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm sorry, just to be clear though, that what you're saying, Madam Chair, is that these other groups would move in later, a couple of years later. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and, and, it, and John is right. In, in the language in here, it isn't necessarily a foregone conclusion that they would right. move in. It, it, um, I think there is the foregone conclusion, but it isn't reflected that way in the, in the language of the bill. You are right. Sure. And sure. I will say that in the years that I've been in, the, in this committee, we've seen probably, well, we, we all know that we've seen tons and tons of studies. And <clears throat> every study that's been done, whether it's external or internal or um, has recommended this move that this should that this should happen that um, and that uh, people at DMV and fishing um, wildlife and liquor and lottery should maintain their their um, <clears throat> attachment to um, and their identity with with their um, their, their department, their agency, but um, be part of the agency of public safety. And I know that sounds pretty weird, but that has been the recommendation since I've been on here for 20 years. So, Senator Clarkson? Okay. Is, is, it not, is it not sort of dissimilar 
to what we did with the attorney general's office and all our lawyers who are actually embedded in the other departments and divisions, but are actually part of the attorney general's office. And, and um, agency of digital services too. Yes, an agency of, sorry, both. Both of them, a very similar situation. And we redid that a couple of years. It, I feel like not that long ago, but it, it's now very clear that every lawyer, whether they're at Department of Health or Ag, are, are uh, employed by the Attorney General's office, but they are deployed and are part of those departments and are functioning as part of those departments. And that worked reasonably well, that, that transition, I think. Well, I do understand the concerns and I, I, um, <clears throat> and I'm sorry, we're not on the same side here also, but um, I think that this was, is one time when we probably will disagree. And I, I do. I do appreciate that. I I'd just like to add that uh, that you know the studies, um, the studies weren't all equivocal, as my understanding of them. Uh, they they uh, they weren't all unequivocal. They um, they, they definitely parsed the different things uh, differently. And 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 in the latest study, to be fair, was I think it was two thousand nine, um, is my recollection. In, in law enforcement years, uh, like dog years, it's a long time. Um, so I, I'm not sure how relevant that is to today's situation, but I, you know, that's just a counterpoint, that's all. But, um, and, you know, and if those other organizations did achieve um, a large amount of streamlining or organizational um, um, de-stressing and, and, and saving money in the budget, uh, I suppose kudos, but uh, as, I, as I'm concerned, as I've expressed, my concerns are that this will be um, um, a very costly and, con and, um, and, um, and pro a process that will be very difficult. Um, um, it, um, you know, among other things, it, of course, is, you know, we will be in a division of law enforcement with a group that's got a different working conditions, different contract, different representation uh, from the employee side. And I think that'll make things um, difficult uh, under one agency as well, frankly. Any other questions for John? Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, so we'll, we'll continue to work on this. And um, however we, end up doing it, I'd like to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Thank you for your patience and having me back. John, oh, wait, you Senator Palmer. I do remember one other thing that we touched on. If this is destined to happen, we talked about uniforms, I think, at one point. I believe Madam Chair came up with the idea that uh, your group would still have, I don't know what, how you phrased it, input into or make the final decision on uniforms. I don't know whether that, how you, <laughs> how you see that, but. It uh, is just, it, in there it says the commissioner shall consult with, with um, the other agencies and departments. And I, I just said it needs to be stronger. The commissioner will, won't consult with the commissioner, will take the decisions from the, from the other departments. So. Bishop well, um, BL's DMV would still have control over its its uniforms, which is a small thing, but we we also consider it a, a very small issue, and yeah. <laughs> and definitely okay. not the crux of the definitely not the crux of the issue. We're we're definitely not worried about uh, about the patches, the uniforms, and the and the designs on the cars. Okay, and sometimes Thanks. people are, but it, but it is not the overarching concern. <laughs> Understood. You know, I just, I just want to, I just want to be clear again. We're talking about how many people, John, under your division. Well, uh, my understanding is that this bill contemplates only removing the twenty-seven sworn people from the depart from the Department of, um, from, I'm sorry, from the Division of Enforcement and Safety. Right. 
at the DMV, which which we're which is bigger than the 27 sworn law enforcement right. officers. There's several civilian support staff, several civilian investigators, et cetera, that aren't contemplated as part of this. So uh, again, a lot of open questions as to how that organization will make that work. So they're not contemplated to be part of the move? No. <laughs> no, I think we heard from Tony Fecos the other day that they would be, that they would remain in DMV and you would remain in DMV, but in a slightly different form, but that you would remain part of the uh, enforcement division. And, and the difference, uh, Madam Chair, is some are sworn and some are not. I mean, it's, it's all the well, sworn the, officers. The 27 are sworn. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. And and the rest aren't. Okay, so <clears throat> committee, I'm. What, what's your pleasure here? Um, <clears throat> I we can make a, a flag by that section, but can we can we <clears throat> begin to walk through it and see where where we have flags? I think that's what you what's next on the agenda. Sure, that's what you wanted to do. Okay. Senator Rom Hensel? Yeah, Madam Chair, um, I don't know actually if you were in the Zoom room, I may have said it at a point where you weren't um, there when we were talking about the upcoming schedule around this bill. Um, I am aware that we're bringing back, you know, a lot of folks who are within law enforcement and public safety and the section around the new office of engagement should really have the input of people who have been impacted by law enforcement activity. Um, and so I just wonder if we're gonna hear from the community or other witnesses about that piece. We, we certainly can if somebody wants, if, we will hear from anybody who wants to testify. Um, we did um, specifically ask um, for uh, input on that section from Susanna Aton and, um, um, Will, Wilda. Wilda, Wilda. And then, but if we want to hear from community people and remember that the office isn't, it just has to create and develop. And it seems to me that's where we would, that's where you would hear from the community people was when they get to the, because this isn't, this isn't creating anything except setting up an office. Well, I mean, as I pointed out, and as folks have come in to testify, they, I mean, they actually said that last time the agency, their department did a public process around public safety. They felt really marginalized, unheard, and uncomfortable with the way the feedback loop was created. They, they said that on record in here. So, you know, I don't know that letting it go from this process to the department is satisfactory to a lot of folks. If, if there are people who want to come and testify, they're welcome to come. I'll mention it at social equity caucus. Okay. Um, but I, I haven't heard, I haven't had any inquiries from anybody about testifying. So I, but if anybody wants to come, they certainly are welcome. They may not know we're taking it up again because people did come in to oppose the overall bill last year. Yeah, I think three people came in, so anyway. Can we walk through and when we get to that point, we can flag that? Absolutely. Okay. So I, I, I don't know exactly how to do this, but I think that I just want to start walking through and seeing if there are issues here as we go through. Um, we have raised two issues now, but um, so um, I'm, does is, anybody have any issues with, um, the section under creation of the agency? No, I, I am going to say that, um, we should add some language here and around the animal cruelty investigation advisory board to, and I don't know that the language has to be here. It can be, um, 
in a different section of the bill, wherever it seems best to live, but that asks that the agency <laughs> review the, um, Mike Sherling has been working with the people in, um, so sorry, my brain is starting to um, collapse. Um, working with the people in Burlington and some other people about um, seeing if, if they can expand that and have it live here. And it isn't time for us to assign it, but it is time, I think, that there could be some study about it. Does that make any sense to anybody, yep. Senator Clarkson? Yeah. Yes, I think that that's fine. I think in, in light of the conversation we just had with John, uh, I, I don't know where the other law enforcement divisions are mentioned and the time frame on contemplating it, because I know it's 2023, I think. I mean, I think it's just next. Am I crazy? I'm thinking that that's it's on page 27. Okay, so it's further. So it doesn't, it, it, it's, it's not even though it's they're not in this group, the explanation for where they might be in the future is elsewhere. It's on page 27, okay. yes. Got it. Okay, thanks. So I know that Anthony, you are you suggesting we put a, a flag beside the Division of Motor Vehicle Enforcement? I guess that's where we go, sure. I, no, I mean, are you suggesting that we put a flag there that they? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, any other? Well, on page three, I think Senator Rom Hinsdale wanted to on line two. Um, I don't mean to speak for you. So. No, yeah, but I don't know that she wanted to underline it there, but when it um, okay. talks about it in the bill itself. Yep, okay. Yeah, that's what that's what I got. Was that right, Geisha? Wherever it appears, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I do have on page four that um, uh, the, the, the division directors, um, A note from Tony Fakos here, and I can't remember. Does anybody else remember what he wanted the division directors to be appointed? Oh. So that they are not. Um, I mean, does anybody else remember exactly what that was? I think, mm. um, Mike, do you remember? Commissioner, do you remember? Why? If I can get to the unmute button, I believe uh, the request was for the directors to either be able to come from the classified service or be appointed in executive service, which um, I, I have not testified about, but I don't disagree with. And I'll uh, note that that is the way it works now uh, in a number of different departments and agencies uh, around uh, state government that it, there are multiple options to be a director. Some of them are classified and some of them are exempt. Yes. Okay, so it doesn't have, the language doesn't have to be changed there. I think it was just a clarification from him. So I'm gonna ask <coughs> the people that are with us, if you, as we're going through this, if you have comments or concerns or language changes or anything, please um, speak up. And well, yes, uh, Senator sorry. Clarkson. Yeah, I mean, just to Mike's point on line seven and eight on page four, it says they are exempt from classified state service. If, if, if we're letting some of them possibly be, then they wouldn't be, right? I mean, you don't, you, aren't you, I thought I heard Mike ask for more flexibility here. I think that's what John Facos was asking for. Tony Facos. I, I mean, think Tony. that, I, I, I think that what they, I thought what I heard, uh, the commissioner saying, and I might be wrong, was that they can come from, they can either be appointed or they can come from the classified, but once they're a division uh, director, they, they would, are they, would there. Not, they would be okay. exempt. Is that what you said, commissioner? Yeah. Uh, that is accurate, but but 
as folks go into those directors' roles, there are directors who are classified and some who are exempt. So if, it's, uh, if it pleases the committee, having the flexibility to do yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. both is actually helpful. That's, okay. That's what I thought. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Yep, we'll, we'll get that changed. Okay, anything else under appointments and duties? Or budget and report? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I don't know where everybody else is. I'm on page five. I, yep, top of page five, deputy secretary. Yeah, and I, I have no problem with any of that. I, I do note at the bottom here that um, it says that uh, members from different divisions of the Department of Law Enforcement shall not be reassigned or transferred outside their division unless the member requests, which I think answered one of John's questions here about being transferred from, from DMV, say, to Fish and Wildlife or to Vermont State Police. And he did have the question about when they're when they're transferred. Are there um, rev, uh, applications or or reviews of their um, appropriateness for those transfers? So you but, feel that answers his concern, Madam Chair? Well, I think it answers one of them. Yeah. Because it does say that they wouldn't be transferred unless they were. I don't think yeah. it's. I, it doesn't certainly address all of his concerns. Yeah. I'm, um, if anybody has issues with going through this, I, I really don't. So, I mean, I've gone through this so many times that. Right, this, but I think, I think this is good. We flagged a few things so far. I think, I think it's good. Let's keep cruising. Yep. Keep cruising. Well, I mean, I'm just curious why did, um, I guess, I don't know where you are, but I'm on page six under yep. subsection three. Yep. So I know this is silly, but mandatory duties. Why are duties mandatory? They're their duties. I mean, where, where, where are you? Uh, line 13. Uh, Why oh, are I think it's called duties. You have you have to you have to say a different section because the printed oh, I, version is different than. Okay, I'm on sub chapter three, commissioners and directors. Yeah, and uh, the second section in that is number six zero five two, and it says mandatory duties, as opposed to what voluntary duties duties they feel <laughs> like on alternate Tuesdays. I mean, to me, duties is duties. Well, I, don't, I still like don't it. see where it says mandatory duties. It, does everybody else see it? Yeah, yeah it's in mine. Is it, what, is it in A or B? No, there is. It, it's, it's above A. Oh, oh, it says mandatory duties. Oh, yeah, yes. So, why, why isn't it just duties? I mean, it seems silly to call them mandatory. I mean, they're the duties of the... Commissioners and directors. Anyway, I, I, I would flag that. I don't. I wonder why Am Amarin. It, it, it might be a drafting thing. Amarin can probably answer it very quickly. Yeah. It just seems to me a little over the top. Amarin. Oh, I see. Because down on six zero five three, there are permissive duties. There's. You'll see under <laughs> mandatory duties. These are all of the shalls. Shall uh, do this. So, shall not do that. Where the permissive is. Ex explains where the commissioner has the flexibility to do other activities um, at the commissioner's discretion. And I, I don't know that it's necessary, but that is. It does seem a little. I, I think I think it's fine. I I don't, I'm not. I think we have enough to do to figure out the areas of concern that we shouldn't spend time uh, well, debating whether we should have mandatory or not. I think having just discussed flexibility with the uh, commissioner above that anything that ties people's hands unnecessarily, I mean, I just, I think it's an issue. So anyway. Well, you don't want any managerial, managerial issue. 
if you're forced, if you, anyway, if, if, a, if Mike doesn't think it's an issue, I'm fine to move on. I just find it extremely, con, it, it, I think when you're running something, you, that's what you're hired to do is, to, I mean, you're, so, anyway. So if you look at the mandatory duties, these are the duties of the commissioner. These are the things that the commissioner has to do. Not the right. secretary. And, this is the right. commissioner. Right. These are the, the things the commissioner has to do. There are some things that the commissioner can do with approval that aren't mandatory. Right. Fine. If it's not an issue and no one else is concerned about it, fine. Yeah. Senator, just for the record, Mike Sherling, yeah. uh, I, I concur that there are often superfluous words uh, buried in various things that we work on, but I would defer to AMRA on whether this matches the general construct of an agency and or department. If it does, I, I think we would keep it. Right. Uh, fine. Okay. But yes, we trust our drafter. Okay. Does anybody have any um, problems with what the commissioner has to do or what the commissioner may do? Well, under the first, under permissive duties, the first one, the first one says the commissioner may, with the approval of the secretary, transfer classified positions within or between divisions, oh. subject to state laws. I'm wondering how that relates to what we talked about earlier. With John. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, no. earlier it said that you, they wouldn't be doing that, and now here it says that they could possibly do it. That's what I'm reading. That's my reading of it anyway. You will see in subsection C further down within this section that it clarifies um, that transferring, it clarifies how transfers must be conducted um, consistent with the language you saw previously. So this would be covering everyone else other than, you'll see when you get to subsection C, I think. Hopefully that will alleviate your concern. It should be consistent between what you read earlier and this section here. Yep. Yes, under C, right? Yeah. Yeah, great, yes. So other positions could be transferred, but not law enforcement. Okay. And then we have directors. Is this where, Amron, is this where we would need to put that they could either be classified or exempt? Or would that be in the, um, in the section above? Section above. Okay. So just remind me here on A, under directors, um, shall appoint the directors for divisions that are part of a department. Does that mean the department, the director of, uh, would be, what does that mean of other with that are part of a department? So this is this is general language that would cover all of the agency. Um, so you have a director that will administer each division within each department of the agency. So this says that it's the commissioner uh, with the approval of the secretary who appoints directors for each division within that department. Um, oh. and, and, uh, and then it gives the secretary the duty of appointing any other directors whose appointment is not otherwise governed by law. This is um, sort of the standard language that you see in the creation of other agencies. It's meant to be relatively uh, generic. Um, okay. Okay, I get it. All right. 
So we have the Department of Law Enforcement. And we have the Department of Fire Safety and Emergency Management. And one of the things I like about this is that this elevates fire safety and emergency management to the same, to the same level as um, law enforcement. A law enforcement. Yeah. Not, yeah. To, not to put law enforcement, not to de-elevate law enforcement, but I, I like the idea because public safety is more than law enforcement. Correct. Yeah, it's elevating. Mm-hmm. Any problems with that? No. Nope. Nope. And then we have the division of support services. That's not a department, that's a division. I need a division of support services. <laughs> Yes, we probably all do. <laughs> I'm reading this with envy. It's like, oh, I could do with all these things. And I think that everything that's in the, all of this has been in there for a long time, with the exception of seven, which was um, put in by Representative Colston. Yeah. Good addition. Okay, so now we come to the Office of Community Engagement. And I guess um, uh, what, what, I just wanna be very clear that if people testify that they're, they're not testifying to the, um, process of public engagement or the variety of mechanisms for community feedback, because that's what this, right. this office is going to be doing. So we're Correct. not doing that in here. We're giving that responsibility to the office, which consists of, I don't remember who it is now, but there is a, the, there's a team of people that are connected to that office. So I just want to make sure that when people testify, what they're testifying to is do they want this? Because when, so anyway, I won't say it again, but yeah, Senator Ron Hinsdale. Well, I mean, I, I really want to caution against trying to limit what, what people testify to. I mean, the intent behind this, I think, was to try and make law enforcement seem more connected to the community or more um, mm -hmm. engaged in some way. And I think people need to be able to comment on whether or not they think this will accomplish that um, or what they think it would need to accomplish that. And I personally, um, you know, raised when we first took this back up, I believe this, this, ses um, this session, that I, I find a lot of concern with how the complaint process is articulated on the website. Um, I think if this office is to mean anything whatsoever, it needs to be able to um, make the complaint process and the resolution a lot more transparent to people. Um, so I started reading from the website and I see we've lost Chief Sherling. Um, but that to me is the only value I can see from a community facing um, office is how people who feel unsafe around people sworn officers um, address their needs and concerns. Okay, oh, I, I, I get that. I, I did not see this at all as a complaint department that they might set up a process for complaints, but that this is not a complaint department. And it also doesn't deal with just law enforcement. This is outreach around emergency management yeah. and around fire safety. This is and around the E911 board. So this isn't this isn't community engagement for law enforcement just this is for the agency itself is the way I see it. And so yeah. The, the complaint process is 
they might have suggestions for the complaint process, but this might not be the group that, that they might set up a process for that, but it might not be the community engagement office that deals with those complaints. Does that make any sense? Um, to some extent, but I, I guess I don't see what problem this is currently solving for emergency operations or fire safety. Um, and if there would be like what, what I, I don't remember hearing any testimony that we needed more engagement around those topics. No, we, we, we had set up, a, it was suggested that we have a, a, some kind of a community um, office or community and it was called relations and that wasn't, we didn't like that term. So we changed it to community engagement and we didn't know exactly what that meant. And so I sent this past um, Hal Colston and asked him to, to come up with some language about what, what this office is looking to do. And it isn't just around law enforcement. This is the, I, I don't know how else to explain it. If, if there are, there might be issues around emergency management. There might be, they, they might want to have a community engagement process set up. They might, um, they might want to maintain a variety of mechanisms for community feedback and engagement regarding the operations of the public safety system. Uh, so this doesn't set anything up. This just says this office is supposed to set that up. I, I don't know what else to say, but so we can have testimony from people if we want to. And if, and if we feel we don't need this office, then we'll take it out. But I think it's important. I mean, I, I guess I see less value in it now than I did before. Cause I, I, I don't, I, I, we haven't heard from those divisions that they're looking for this office created. Well, okay. I'm not sure where to go from that, from that because this is part of the agency and we haven't taken testimony from those other offices much on this year on the agency concept um, we did last year, but, but other committee members, can you wait, help uh, out? Did, uh, may I jump in? Yes, please do. I thought we heard fairly compelling testimony from uh, from Etan and from Wilda in particular about the import of having an office of engagement to as they go forward into and work creating these divisions and departments that that they build in opportunities uh, for, in every aspect uh, to go back to number seven training, including diversity, equity, and inclusion training in kind of in every department. So um, certainly there. So I, I actually, they were very compelling, I thought, and made a good argument for there being this office of engagement to, to actually bring along all those divisions and departments. In, I'm in not sure way. how training is engagement because training is already supposed to be happening. Well, I can't speak to that because I am not overseeing it, but I, I well, call them more. Thank you, Madam Chair. From what I can remember, Commissioner Sherling liked the language that Representative Colson offered to us. All this does in my mind is create an office. It does not speak to the methods by which they will engage. It just says there is an office. And yes, I think 80%, 85% of the engagement process will probably have to do with law enforcement. I, I don't know how much in it, you know, <laughs> engagement there'll be with the fire district. If there's a fire, you want somebody to show up to put it out. It, it doesn't require too much more than that. So all this does, I think, is create the agent or the office. It will be up to them to decide in what manner they engage the stakeholders. And, and so I, I I'm fine with it. I don't. I don't know how else to do it. And I think, I think Hal's language does exactly what we want it to do. It it says create and execute a process. However, they decide to do that, 
and however they want to involve the stakeholders in it is fine. Um, uh, so I, I'm at a loss to explain it any further, I guess. And I think there was a there were some different opinions from Susanna, Wilda, and Eitan about how to do this, which they will hash out internally because we're not telling them how to do this. Wilda talked about having a standing committee. Susanna didn't talk about having a standing committee. So there's a different approach here. And the people in the office will try to figure out the systems and what the process is. So I don't think we're in a position to say what, what their processes should be and what their um, mechanisms should be for getting community feedback. That's and so I they, think perhaps we shouldn't, I mean, engagement is a very triggering word for a lot of people who've been harmed by law enforcement because they don't want to be engaged. They want accountability. So I think calling it an office of engagement and acting like it's helping the community already presupposes that that's what people want. And so maybe not calling it anything, but talking about it as an opportunity for accountability and transparency in, in the agency of public safety is worthwhile. But, you know, I don't know that saying there's going to be an office of engagement and they'll figure out what to do adds a lot of value for people. Well, I, we can take it out. And then I think we will get a lot of grief for taking it out because now there's no public, now there's no office here that's going to focus on trying to figure out how to get community feedback and how to, how to um, engage the public. That that's, somebody has to have the responsibility for doing that. So if we took it out, then we don't have that. And I, I'm, I'm, um, if we don't have to call it community engagement, we can call it something else. It isn't, and it isn't accountability. That's something else. This is, we have the, uh, AHS is doing this big thing around the GAC, um, worked with AHS to come up with, and with uh, Drew, Russell um, about the community engagement process that they're doing. And that's, they're doing that. And this, it seems to me that this is the same kind of thing, except we're not telling them how to do it. They're, they're going to figure out they're just as Drew and the, um, and other people figured out how to do it for the um, around the outcomes and the indicators. They figured out the system there. We didn't put that in the statute. We told them to figure it out. And this, we're doing the same thing here. And we had community relations, but that um, people said that was a bad word so because that just sounded like public relations. So we changed it to engagement. If there's a better term, I'm gonna leave it in. If somebody wants to take it out, they can take it out. And if people wanna come in and testify, they can come in and testify, but what they need to do is testify to this language, not what they think the office, not what they think the process should be to engage public um, safety stakeholders in the development of the policies or the mechanisms for community feedback, because we're not, gonna, we're not putting that in the bill. We're, charging the office to do that. So they, they can talk about that if they want, but we're not gonna put in here. We don't have time to figure out how they should be doing this. That's the point of this is for them to, for us to charge them to do it. So I'm, I don't know, is there a better word than engagement? I, I will ask for feedback from people who are impacted by law enforcement. Um, so I, I will try to see if people want to testify to that. Okay. I just right. think the narrowing and narrowing of what people can talk about is a little bit of a way of cutting people off from saying what they feel they need to say about, I mean, that's kind of the opposite of community engagement, right? <laughs> So I uh, yes. think we should let people, you know, engage. 
I, I realize that, but I realize that, but the, the getting community engagement is a little bit different than writing a bill. And what we're doing is asking for language. Should the language in this bill be different? Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're asking. We're not asking for them to tell us what what. Anyway, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna. I, I just <coughs> if they want to come in and. I mean, I can't tell them what they should be saying, but when we are doing a bill, we generally ask people to respond to the bill itself. That's generally what testimony does. So, Did we, Madam Chair, did we ever actually yeah. hear from Hal about this? I mean, a long time ago we did, but we... Well, I don't, I don't know. He didn't come in and testify. Yeah. I sent he it just to him. Did the, this work and, and, and he thought, wrote, he, this is what he wrote. Oh, this, and, and I think this is, this is good. I, I think if they can manage to engage every one of these departments and divisions in their communities and in, more fully than they do now, I think that's great. So Unless if that's... people want to come in, we will schedule that. Um, again, um, uh, next Friday at, I think I have it down for one o'clock. Friday at one o'clock. Yep. Okay. So the E911 board, we heard from Steve Whitaker on that. Anybody else have a, an issue? Okay. That, and they're fine with this, right? The E911? The E911 board has, has been assigned to the agency of yeah. public safety for a while. Yeah, yeah. And now the section three is the whole um, DMV section. And we're just gonna have to make a decision about that. And I'd like to hear from um, the commissioner and um, I guess primarily the commissioner. And Jennifer, I see you there and Chris and um, Chief Pete and stuff. So I, you've been very quiet, but we, we haven't given, I haven't given you much chance to say anything. I've been talking way too much here. So please. Madam, um, thank you, Madam Chair. I was actually on here to see if you guys were going to be discussing anything about the um, S-250. And if you're well, not. I don't, then... I don't think we're going to get there because this is taking much longer than I had hoped. Okay, ma'am. Well, then I will sign off and I hope you all have a great rest of your evening. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. Bye-bye. And Chief Pete, is that why you're here too? Uh, yes, ma'am. Just to answer any questions that you may have regarding that, uh, to make myself available, I, I can sign off if you need me to. No, I, we don't need you to at all. You're welcome to sit and listen to us haggling. <laughs> all right. So the section three, we have to, and I'm going to pass over that for right now. Um, and then the, the rest of it is Has the Mike transition. Okay. Sorry. What? I hadn't realized Mike Sherling had left us. So obviously. And the rest of it is how the transition will happen. And then the very last one is on page 27. I think that's the whole rest of it is, um, transition. Isn't that right, Amarin? Until you get to the very last page. Uh, let's see. Yes, there are a few provisions around transition. And then there is uh, cleanup language starting around section five for e changes that need to be made um, throughout the statutes for each of these uh, entities that's being moved and for the uh, transition of the department or the uh, transition of the Department of Public Safety into the Department of Law Enforcement. Uh, yeah. And then there are, so I believe there are some report uh, sections or at least one report section at, towards the very end. Yes. And that um, the report section is um, 
the status, there's a status report. And then there's also the report on the, on page 27 um, uh, concerning fish and wildlife and um, the other law enforcement. Right. Um, <clears throat> I get to that. Uh, and this, right, the feasibility of, so, okay. So where are we committee? I think we have flagged up. Uh, I'm a little puzzled by the 911, what additional we might want to do on that, Madam Chair, the concerns of Steve's. And I don't know what you want to do about those. And um, we flagged a couple things, I thought at the beginning, but I think other than that, I think we're, and other than hearing from community members about their, uh, both hopes and concerns about engagement, I think we're getting there. The DMV, I think is the, and the an DMV. outstanding issue. Yeah, we need to hear from Shirley, from Michael about that. I and, don't think Steve's concerns had anything to do with, with the 911 board being here. I think it had to do with how we're um, allocating the money for regional dispatch and the towers. And who, if the towers can belong to the to private entities or not, I think those were his concerns, not yep. not the the board itself. Yep. It was am I right about that? I'm I, I believe so, but I, I was just wondering if there was anything in that, and maybe my, Brian heard more because he was with Steve more. If there was anything that was applicable to this, I don't know. So I I took his comments to be more specific in terms of. Uh, his dissatisfaction with the way things were being run right now, but I, I'm not sure what intersection those concerns have with this bill in the sense of it being a reorganization bill. I'm sure he would disagree with my, uh, my uh, report on that, but um, I, you know, he was specific about funding and why this is taking so long is freedom of information act requests and all that sort of stuff, which, to me, doesn't really intersect with the bill itself. And I think after crossover, we are going to hear more about dispatch and how the the dispatch the money for the dispatch and the polls is in the in the budget and how that gets distributed. And I know Chief Pete, um, we've had a conversation about that, and um, Mark Anderson. So there, are, um, Roger, Mark, who there are a number of people who are concerned about how that money is allocated and and the parameters around it and stuff. So we'll yeah. have that, but that isn't part of this bill. So we'll have that after, after um, crossover. Okay. Cause it'll end up being in the um, appropriations bill. Got it. Okay. So. Um, Next Friday. We will schedule this um, and and we'll have to have the discussion on the DMV and the and hear up from community members. I will say that's the only piece of this that I've had any recent interaction with uh, with anybody. Um, nobody else has said anything negative about the bill lately, but that certainly has. Uh, sort of risen up over the last week or so. And I think that when we take that up again, we should make sure that we have, we invite John Federico back. Yep. That, <laughs> that we yeah. have uh, Tony Fakos because he's the head of that, of, of the enforcement uh, division at DMV. Have them back. And, and I know that there's a difference of opinion there, but we're gonna have to hear from both of them and sort it out. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. Yeah, I just I think, well, for me, I, I need to hear why it was compelling to put them in and study the others. So, yeah, um, and I, I, I'm not sure about that. I think they, John made a good point. Yeah, they started instead of doing everybody at once, but that that we should hear that. Mm -hmm. and, and also yeah. hear from the commissioner. Yes, we will. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think that was a, a that was a good point. That yeah. So, all right. Are there other um, things that we need to address now? Then on this. I don't think so. And I um, someplace on my table here, I have. 250 and I apologize that we didn't get to that today. And what I did was I divided it up into, I went through it and there are, I think very discrete sections. And what we'll do is um, do it like we did before when we did the law enforcement thing, we'll, we'll deal with sections two, three and four at one time, because there might be different people testifying on them. So I have the one section is the um, AG's abil ability to investigate uh, sheriffs and municipal um, agencies that seem to have a, a history of um, discrimination or a pattern of discrimination. So that's one. And then um, the raising the hours to to 10, I think we heard both from Susanna. I didn't hear from Aton on that. I heard from Susanna and I think that she, oh no, it wasn't Susanna. We'll hear from Susanna. I think that her suggestion was that it be um, intertwined with all training instead of having more discrete hours, but we'll hear from that. And then one was on the data collection. Right. And one section on independent investigations and the database of law enforcement officers was a separate one. And um, the independent investigations, there was another section on that. And then the disclosure of information on the um, law enforcement officers and confessions based on false information. Mm -hmm. So I think that what we'll try to do is um, when we take it up is focus on a couple of them instead of trying to focus on this whole thing and having people go back and forth and back and forth, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So yeah, I'll, I'll try and organize it so that the same people might be here for, um, like the AG's office could be here for a couple of them and the council might be here for a couple different ones. So, okay. And Ben, is that why you joined us here? Yes, hi. I, uh, hi. I know that S250 was on the agenda, but was not sure how the timing all played out. Yeah. So I think that that's the way we're gonna do it. We'll take a, a couple sections at a time and have discrete uh, discussions about each of the sections instead of yes. kind of the general <clears throat> There so, wasn't a, there, there was a sort of, let me fit it all into one bill, but not yeah. only, if you don't talk about them all at the same time, you miss something, you know, I do think they can be taken up discreetly depending on which section they connect. Some of them connect. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that's what we'll do. And I'll try and um, get that also for next Friday. So, cause a lot of the same people are gonna be involved. <laughs> ben, you've got a great shout out today on the Senate floor. <laughs> you did well, thank you yeah um that my first bill passing out of committee making it to the floor so um and i i remember when i asked, asked for you to draft it yeah. so <laughs> it was and then dick joined on and jenny it was great so thank you uh -huh. thank you i appreciate yeah. it after the Magna Carta speech i couldn't add my two cents thanking the committee for their work so no i <laughs> I actually don't like thanking committees for their work. I, I, it just. Oh, it was good. It was good with the way it went. It was good. I know. I know. I think in general that committees do their work. And if we all stood up and thanked them, we'd never get off the floor. It's part of our mandatory duties. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. And uh, actually that's a permissive duty. I think it's a prohibited duty. Madam yes, Chair, yes. Can Take I? Can I know that it's different, you know, because it's uh, folks who may have other civilian, you know, 
commitments to doing other things, but can we invite specifically NAACP and ACLU for the S250 conversation as well next Friday? I just think sure. we're only hearing from, from law enforcement this has a lot to do with- No, that. and I, I, will, I will say that I have never turned anybody down. I'm not gonna go out searching for people okay. to come and testify. You but don't if have time. What? You don't have time to go out and search. Well, I, I think it um, particularly, um, it's hard for individual people to follow, but they're, but advocacy groups, yeah. if they're not, if they're following it, then they have to call to ask if they can come and testify because, and I'll never turn anybody down. Well, since I'm not as closely involved in scheduling, Gail, can you just let me know what, what you need from me to make sure that ACLU and NAACP are they, invited? They should, they should contact Gail. Jay Diaz or whoever should okay. contact Gail. Okay, well, and NAACP is definitely not just following you know, our agenda. So um, All right. I could just email Gail. That's helpful. Yeah, and give her their okay. email addresses and who to invite. Okay. And it would be Stefan. I would I would start by inviting Stefan and, and Mia from the two NAACP chapters and see if they right. have like a committee designee or something. Yeah, if you can just provide me names, I'd okay. be happy to track it down. And I know things okay. have changed in the last year. Some leadership has uh, yeah changed, so names are appreciated. And, e and emails, contact info. <laughs> but yeah, there we're, I'm. We're happy to hear from from people. Okay. So, anything else we need to do? Nope.